A reading from the New Testament as rendered by the Gullah culture, the Gullah, E.T. Gullah culture. And as usual, we go to any page. I was up front for a lot, so let me go to the back a little bit here. Go to Hebrews uh, 780. Page 780, Hebrews. And if we go to 12, let's go to 12. So then, yeah, hmm, I need my reading glasses for sure. They're coming in the mail. So then, you must don't never lost heart. Has up your arm or the drop and make your wobble knee strong. Okay. Oh, okay. And the translation, the uh, English translation, or the old English translation of the Marlowe um, um, Shakespeare era. See, that's, that's in the smaller type. Good luck with that. And then we read from the bigger type. That's the uh, Gullah Geechee, the, the, the Gullah translation. So here we go, 12. We, uh, wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Okay. Once again. So then, you must John never lose heart. He's up the arms and the drop and make your wobbly knees strong. Once again, the translation is, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. There you are, reading. Uh, this is a Saturday. It's, uh, um, and we read every, usually Monday, Monday through Saturdays. But uh, Sundays we read um, from the compensatory concept by Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. And that is... Uh, our, that's our scripture. Uh, that book is our scripture. So Sunday's sermons uh, consist of that. But uh, for the other six days, I used to do, even do it on Sunday. Uh, we read from the the, the New Testament. Um, uh, the the, the Galgici uh, folks come from. Well, 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 let's start all over. Not start all over. Let's start from the beginning. Uh, every morning, my grandmother. I was raised by my grandmother. Here, my grandmother would read the Bible at about six o'clock. It's a little bit after six now. Uh, about six o'clock, she'd be out there. Now, I wake up early naturally. I've always woken up early. Uh, these days, I wake up at four o'clock for some reason. You know? But I stay, I stay down, a little meditation, whatever it is. Uh, so, I, and then this whole eight hour sleep thing, I don't really get, you know, eight, nine hours sleep. Uh, if I take an afternoon nap, I'm cool. Uh, but I usually just rest all day, you know, because I can. I rest. I'm not a on a machine line, I'm sort of, well, I'm retired, I'm retired, I don't, I don't have to work, I don't work, <laughs> uh, I mean, I work on what I want to work on, um, well, she would get up every morning at six o'clock, she'd be reading the Bible, I'd, I'd be up, I'd, I'd, I'd walk out there, and I'd see her reading the Bible, but she would never, uh, she would never call me over, or, 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 or best way I can say, impose the Bible on me, like, I guess people would do, uh, she would leave us, the, my grandmother, she she was extraordinary. She she didn't do that. She didn't play. She didn't play. Try to replace a, a male figure or anything like that. Well, we had a lot of male figures, and this is a different time and era. Um, you know, the, when you say you're raised by your grandmother, you're, you're raised in the project. People have that little imagery of you. But my upbringing, except for the first, well, except from three to six, was uh, was pretty uh, spectacular. You know, three to six is a whole years. Three to six was was pretty rough, a lot of abuse, uh, but uh, um, survived that. Anyway, and so uh, at some particular point, by last, two years ago, last year, two years ago, sometime during the, the pandemic, I found out about the uh, the, uh, the, the Gullah Bible. And uh, so I had this idea that I wanted to uh, sort of, because my, my grandmother, the one that would 
read the Bible every morning. Her, her father was Gullah Geechee. Her mother was Mohawk Indian. But, but so from my maternal side, I, I have the, the Gullah in me. Um, and so I was uh, just thinking about how, you know, I'm not intrigued, but there's some kind of word for it. But I was thinking, well, how do I contact with my, my lineage, my, my Gullah lineage? And usually, you know, you got to have a relationship with, with, with another human being. Or uh, sometimes, like in this, in this case, you know, or you have song. Song, is a, a song and dance is a, is a great way of doing it. Um, uh, not so much with art, but, you know, sometimes art makes you connect. But also just the, the, the language. And so since this um, Bible is the, the, the language that they use, I would fi I figure, well, if I have an entry into somehow in, into that into that language. But most interesting is um, at some particular point, I had read the entire, entire Bible. I think the second the second time around I was uh, I was uh, I was visiting my grandmother. Right. Well, I hadn't left the house by then, and um, and she, she, she saw me reading the Bible. She says, "Oh, you are reading the Bible?" I said, "Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm almost through." I so, <laughs> the end, you know, the, I was up to, you know, the New Testament and somewhere in there. I mean, I must have been at the Hebrews or something like that. And um, <laughs> she said, oh, you don't have to. Yeah, I said, yeah, I, was, I read, the, I read, I read the whole thing, the Old Testament, New Testament. She said, oh, you don't have to read that, old, that old, that Old Testament. You know, the New Testament's fine enough. You don't have to read all that. And I'm going to look at her, going like, oh, really? Now you tell me. <laughs> Very funny. Um. So anyway, so I uh, so I get this I got this idea. So I I started reading I started reading the Bible every morning like my grandmother did, right? And uh, it's very interesting. It's 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 how we say insightful. Like for instance, I give you an example. Um, uh, yesterday I read the page two ninety two. Let me go to two ninety two. See what I read yesterday. Page two ninety two. Uh, this is how you decipher it because every time I I record. And I uh, basically just say the page, and then if you listen to it, you s figure out what page. Oh, 292, remember? 392. Uh, 379, 380, 291, 292. Okay, so like, for instance, they say, they ask Jesus, say, Teacher, wh when that gonna happen, right? So that's what the trans, that's what the Gullah translation is. But, the English translation is, they ask him saying, Master, but when shall these things come be? There's a difference between teacher and master. I mean, I understand you, uh, 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 like, you know, they, they used to call uh, teachers like, 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 what do you call a uh, young boy in the English parlance, uh, young master or master like that. But there's a big difference between teacher and master. And as I, let me put it this way. I've always thought that people say, when was Jesus born? Well, you know, fictional character or not, whatever you want to say it. But for me, he was born like May 15th. And that's because I'm into numerology. And well, one in five is six. Six is the the number for, for teachers and, and, and we're learners and teachers, you know, students and teachers. So for, for me, Jesus was a teacher. And so for when I read in the in the Old Testament, in, in the, in the um, King James Version, they say master, but here they say teacher. That's something to me. Even I think I just saw something just now. There's a big difference. Oh well, well, there's a big difference to me. Uh, we just read Hebrews. Uh, what did I say? Yeah, Hebrews twelve was it? And they, yeah, must John never lost heart. Hands up the arms and drop the the meat. Yeah, wobble the knees. Okay. And so it was, wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. You see these translations, right? I get more, I get more out of the Gullah reading than I do from the uh, Old English, you know, the, the uh, King James Version. So I think that's quite interesting. And I, I guess I collect, I connect more, if you want to say that. With the uh, with, with with the gullah, so this is very interesting. So this is this, like I say, this is a Saturday. So I guess I should dedicate Saturdays to explaining what's going on with what, what I have. As you see in the background there, the uh, red, black, and uh, uh, green flag. Uh, not the it's not the 
collective uh, color of uh, the Pan-African. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday this past week to uh, Marcus Messiah Gavi. But it's not a Pan-African flag. It was a, a, a rendering by this Dave Hammond. Uh, David Hammond, he was uh, he's an artist. I guess he's still alive. I should interview him. He's an artist, and he made that for an occasion as an art piece uh, for African-American. Now, some Pan-Africanists don't accept that. A lot of people don't accept that. But, you know, how does the flag start? How does the, how does the standard start? You know, it starts or whoever starts it. If it catches on, it catches on. But that flag has been catching on a lot. Um, so I I like it. So I, I use that instead of the RBG, instead of red, black, and uh, green flag for because I, I, you know, there's this other thing of what, what do we call ourselves? Some say it, uh, uh, American descendants of, of slavery. Uh, you know, we'd be ADOS. Some people say um, uh, foundation of black Americans, all that. I, and I had this talk with, um, uh, well, this conversation with James Small one time. And he was, we had this back, well, what did we call us? Are we black? He said, well, black or whatever, whatever. But it's kind of strange because, um, well, we're, we're the freedmen now. I mean, I, I, like, I like freedmen better. Uh, but in, in, but freedmen come from, that, well, comes from that state. So Negro would be, you know, we from that Negro. If you say Negro, that is specific to African-American. You know, because that's the whole slavery, the, the, all the chopping block, whatever have you. But I guess, you know, it, because in, in another, like say for instance, a lot of slaves, a lot of enslaved people came from um, from Brazil to, to Portuguese and all the rest of that stuff. So they, they wouldn't, I don't know what they would say. Would they say Negro? I don't know what they would say. But um, but it's just intriguing to me, language, um, and this is a, a, a way of me going in. So, so I, I, I have the flag in the background. You see my, my last name is this. Sloan, actually, the... the, the um, the, uh, I say the Anglo translation of Sloan is warrior, but it, that's why I did. People don't get that. Here on this other side here, I have a. Oh, sorry, that's my. Uh, this is called a wisdom knot from uh, from the Akan people of uh, of West Africa. So I have that there. Uh, I wear um, this kente cloth. I guess it comes from. There's all kinds of uh, different kente cloth, um, and this is a very rare one that you don't usually see i got this a long long time ago so i use this as a you know because i come from a I, I i grew up in a catholic church you know so i sort of it, it was sort of like a, a dress for that but um uh and and then i have i have this hat this is this like a i i i put it like this because it's more ecumenical <laughs> again like the catholic church right so i use this hat but i use it on the green side there's a, this, this has a reversible, it's black on the other side. Then you have the red star in the middle. So what's that for? No, you see, the, and everybody thinks it's the whole communist thing. And, and if it was on the black side, I guess that would be the Uhuru movement, which I am, I actually, you know, little, little known. I never joined any organizations, but one organization I joined a long time ago was the Uhurus, and they just got busted by the, by the, by the Biden administration for, I don't know, some sort of, weird association for years ago that um, somebody invited into a conference in Russia with that. I don't know, some, some weird thing like that. Maybe I'll do a, a piece on that. I, I don't know. But they've been around for a long time. Uh, they've been around for like 50 years. Like I've been around. I've been doing, I've been, ra I've been doing radio for 50 years. Uh, I, I, I've been doing a lot of things for 50 years. Um, so, so this is quite, or quite interesting to me. Right. But anyway, back to the red, black and, and green of this all. So black is on one side, green is on the other side, and it's a little bit of red. Now that's the colors for Ogun, as as uh, from the Yoruba culture, the, the strain that came up through Cuba, and onto United, uh, onto North America. So uh, so this is actually my Ogun cap that I, that I wear, but people don't know that. that but you wouldn't know that. So that's the explanation of everything. Oh, there's one also, I always 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 have my grand nephew around. He's always by me, usually he's on my right side. Hey, uh, so you see, this was, I think he was about two, less than two, um, but when the pandemic first hit, and he automatically put his fists up like that. You see, nobody told him to do that. Hey, so, so hey, he's got that Gullah Geechee then because, see, the, the Gullah Geechee people, they are, they are, they're, they're warriors. They, you know, you don't mess. <laughs> you just don't mess. That's what I did. And here's a weird thing. Let me just say one more thing. Uh, my my father was the one I stand with my mother. However, it seems as though he might have been uh, Garifuna or Garifuna, however you want to say it, depending if you're doing the Spanish or the English pronunciation. 
And those are, again, those are warrior people. So on both sides, I'm, I'm warrior. And and my last name is warrior, ah, whatever. So, so all these uh, things come together. And and this has been very um, inst instructive. It's very, very, um, I don't, this reading, reading in a, in a calm, you know, you know, the first light, you know, just coming up or whatever have you. It's an interesting time, you know. So I enjoy it, and hope you do too. Uh, I being me, T from the Patterson Secondary Trenches to bed, letting you know what I only suspect.